Hi, I'm Dave Ruck. I am uh, one of the current public scholars with the New York Council for the Humanities. And I'm also someone who's been running around the state of New York for the last 25 years or so giving presentations and lectures and performances. So just wanted to share some best practices with you in terms of promoting your event and trying to maximize the attendance. Um, in terms of reaching out to your community, I think there are five areas you're gonna wanna think about. At least, uh, the five that come to my mind are, uh, well, the first is maybe the most obvious, sending some press releases out or contacting your local media, your local radio and, uh, and or the local print media, your uber local community paper and or the larger metropolitan area paper, if that applies where you are. And, uh, you know, always thinking about giving the reporters enough lead time and not contacting them two days before the event, but, uh, you know, a week to two weeks ahead to say we have this thing coming up um, so that at least perhaps you can get a listing, if not get a, a short story done on the upcoming presentation. Sending a photograph really helps in my experience and also just trying to uh, to frame what's going to be happening in a way that would be of interest to the community. In my experience, uh, the media is not necessarily interesting in just promoting what you're doing to promote what you're doing. They're interested in stories that are going to appeal to the community. So trying to frame your press release with that in mind will really help. Um, the second area that you're going to want to think about is, of course, sending to your own email list. Um, if you're a library, perhaps you have a list of patrons. If you're a historical society, maybe you have a, an email list of members. Um, email is an extremely effective way to get the word out about presentations and get the word directly to people who are likely to be interested, right? And I think, you know, a best practice there is to maybe think about doing two different emails, one maybe three weeks ahead of time or so to make people aware that the presentation is coming up and ask them to save the date on the calendar. And then as you get much closer, say two, three, four days out from the event, Another reminder email really helps. Uh, you don't want to, of course, overburden people, but I think uh, a two email approach is, is really effective in just keeping it on people's minds and, and getting people to, to turn out. Number three, we should talk about social media. Social media has become so important for so many of us in terms of getting the word out. You may have a, a, a Facebook page, for instance, for your organization and uh, someplace that you put notices. Social media is a great way to, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent additional avenue to have, but sometimes I think we confuse it with being adequate promotion in and of itself, which it's really not. If you take a look at the engagement levels you get uh, when, you, when you post to your Facebook page, for instance, you'll see that very few of the people who have liked your page are actually uh, seeing your individual posts. And so it is important to put messages out on social media um, and whatever channels you happen to be using are great. But uh, I just would encourage you not to rely on that as the only way, the only method you're using of getting the word out because it doesn't tend to reach as many people as we'd like to think it does. Number four would be to contact any affinity groups um, related to your speaker's topic. So in other words, for me, my topics are uh, related to music and American history and New York State history. So I have several different themed shows that I do. So if I'm coming to give a presentation for you and the topic is the War of 1812, well, let's see, who else would that topic um, be of interest to? It might be of interest to folk music organizations because I perform on different instruments. It might be of interest to historical societies or history-minded organizations. So getting the word out to these kinds of affinity groups that are going to have a natural connection to the subject of the talk uh, is really, really helpful. A fifth uh, consideration would be reaching out to your local community in terms of um, if you can even just put a simple flyer together, um, your local libraries um, are happy to post things. Um, schools, if, if the presentation would appeal to a school-aged audience, getting uh, some flyers or at least getting the word out to your local schools. Senior centers, I've seen uh, many of my presentations um, where uh, groups of seniors are actually bussed in. Um, there are many senior facilities that are really going out of their way to find opportunities like this for free programming that they can bring their 
population to. So um, if the presentation would appeal to a senior audience, by all means, it can be a great idea to reach out to senior facilities as well. I also wanted to share with you kind of a best practice in terms of promoting the event at your own facility. You, many of you have visitors or patrons that come in on a regular basis, so it's of course a great idea to have a little flyer, a uh, stack of little flyers on the desk that can be handed out to people to let them know about the program. And many of you also have uh, those little sandwich boards that can be placed out at the street um, that can announce the event and so people driving by in the week or two beforehand um, will be notified that there's an event coming up. It's really important on those little sandwich boards and on those flyers that you use in your library to not only mention the speaker's name, um, that can be very important, but just as important, if not more important, is to say what it is that they're going to be doing or talking about. If you have limited space, like on that little sandwich board out at the street, unless you've booked someone with really big name recognition, like a Garrison Keillor, right, or a, a Bob Dylan, uh, it might be a better idea, if you have limited space and limited letters, to say what's going to happen rather than to say the person's name. So in other words, uh, rather than, you know, Friday, 7 p.m., Dave Ruck, well, that makes all the sense in the world because Friday at 7, Dave Ruck is going to be there, except the people driving by may not have any idea what that means or who Dave Ruck is. So it might be better in my case, again, giving uh, music presentations, it might be a lot more effective to say Friday, 7 p.m., Erie Canal songs or War of 1812 music or whatever the topic is of your presentation. I'm not going to be offended that my name isn't out there. I think it's much more important to get people in the door. So I hope this has been of some help to you and I wish you tremendous success with your upcoming event.